All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Real Talk video. May the Most High bless you. I pray everybody's having a beautiful, blessed weekend as we give the Most High all the honor, the glory, and all the praise. My title now says, You don't have a covenant, you got a contract. Very hot topic because I want to talk about covenant versus just having a contract. You got people who are married. You got people who are shacking up. You got those of us that's single. You got people that's divorced. Then you even got people that's still married, but they separated and still dating somebody else and living with them, still married. And then some people just tell you, Brother JT, it's just complicated, but we still together. That's just my baby daddy, or that's just my baby mama. We got a lot of drama. We got these babies in the way, so it is what it is. So this is once again another Real Talk video. Y'all notice I've been doing a lot of Real Talks in these past um, videos for a reason, because I've been meeting a lot of new people, and a major shout out to everybody. Um, and I like to do the Real Talk videos to draw a lot of people. But that Bible study video, those word, the word videos, is what's going to keep you. So I have balance on this page, and then you'll also see me put a little, you know, chisel monkey video up, or videos of me with my sense of humor. I love to just have fun, but also be real. So I thank everybody, uh, and I want to give also a um, special shout out to Sister Jennifer Wilkerson and um, Brother Frank, nineteen eighty, I Z E. Big shout out to you and uh, Kizzy Pool 77 I've been looking at a lot of y'all comments and encouragement and uh, thank you for that. May the most I bless you. So now, got that out of the way. Let's look at this about having a covenant versus just having a contract. It's a lot of people together, but for all the wrong reasons. But I want to ask you this before I move on. Is it a difference between loving somebody and tolerating somebody? If you're at the house with your wife, your husband, or your boyfriend or girlfriend, baby daddy, baby mama, whoever you are, looking at this video, ask each other, baby, do you love me? Or do you just tolerate me? And I'm being serious. Do you love me or do you just tolerate me or is it a difference? Is love and tolerate mean the same thing? My question to you. You got people who are with each, uh, with, with each other and they can't stand each other. But yet, neither one will leave. Well, if the most tired is not in it, what do you have your covenant based on? Oftentimes I hear Big Brother Mini Man say, if God is not in it, it's best you come on out of it. Well, if the Most High is not in it, what do you have? You don't have a covenant. And most people I know look at their marriage as a contract. But the majority of the people are with each other because they still going to benefit off each other in some kind of way. With well, JT, I can't leave, man. You know, we got the house. I don't have nowhere else to go. We can't stand each other. We don't even talk. We don't go to church. We don't pray. We don't nothing. We just in the house together. Children looking at us. I'm miserable. All I do is complain. It's that. This is what a lot of people I know are doing. How many times do you hear we just tolerate each other? Now if you say love and tolerate is the same thing to you, Please tell me why. Explain yourself. I want to. I want to see the comments. I love to see the feedback. Love that. You see, women who tolerate a man beating the hell out of them. They being abused in any way you can think about it, and yet instead they'll still say, "Well, I love him, and I know he loves me. I know I got a black eye. He kicked me down the stairs last night." I know he's not working. I know he's lazy. 
I know he don't do nothing all day. I go to work. But I love him. And if you call that love, you lost. You lost. So when we look at the Most High's covenant, something that our Father never breaks. I've never read once in the Bible where he broke any covenant. In this particular video, we're talking about the marriage covenant. When you look at the Most High's divine order, see, there's too many women out here, they want the title wife, but they don't want to be wife. It's some men I know, they want the title husband, but they don't want to be a husband. They don't want to live according to what the Bible says. Because when you take on your cross and follow the Most High, there is some tough roads ahead. A lot of people are doing things for a show. I want a thousand people at my wedding so they can see me say I do, but really I don't. Somebody will catch that later. How many people do you know who love the title but they don't want the work that comes behind the title. See, the Most High in His covenant is so powerful. I didn't say the Most High's contract. See, a contract can be broken. Let me break this down for, for a moment. When you look at a contract, a contract can be broken. But a covenant is never broken. That's why it never should have been if you are under the covenant getting divorced a lot of people got married young didn't have the Holy Spirit no way so they'll say they never want to get married again because of they looking at their past and it didn't work out but they never had the Holy Spirit in it they never understood the covenant but a covenant is never broken and that's why you don't let no anybody into your marriage when I think about a covenant and then you look at promises Many people make promises and break them real fast. I'm so glad our father is not like us with making promises. He makes a covenant. I'm not going to say he, the Holy Spirit, makes a covenant. It's, you know what I like about a covenant? It's lifelong. The rest of your life. That's why when you take those vows, for better or for worse, that's the rest of your life. You got a whole lifelong process. When you look at the Most High's covenant, you see this relationship between a man and a woman. That, that vow that you make, not a contract that you sign, but that marriage, that, that vow that you make when you become one flesh. You love each other. You have the Most High first. But the question nowadays is, Who's putting who together? I see a lot of women praying for a godly man, but then they don't even have patience. They cry and complain, and then they rush and go get somebody that's just going to mess up their life. When you look at your contract, when you don't have a covenant, you see how bad shape you in. I see a lot of women now, they more focus on the wedding and spending money, but not focus on the most high being the head of their life. The divine order. It's just, I got to go get this. I got I want to be seen. I, but when you break it down and look at scriptures, you're supposed to be a godly man and a godly woman doing things in a godly way. It's too many people getting married and basing their marriage off of what they homegirl said. Uh oh, fellas, quit basing your marriage off how your homeboy doing. You know your homeboy said do this. If you're not basing it off of the most time, you ain't basing it off nothing at all. Because everybody marriage runs a different way. See, I'm saying marriage, but let's just be real in this video. The majority of people are shacking up. There is no covenant in the shack up. How can you expect the most high to bless a marriage when you don't even have a marriage, a covenant? How can you have a covenant without the most high? So when you see people who just tolerate each other, 
Well, what does that mean? When you look at the word tolerate, mean to put up with. I'm just putting up with. I like to say tolerate and settle to settle sometimes is in the same category. Because I see a lot of people, they just settling. Well, I don't think I can do no better. I know I'm going to just settle for her. Well, don't nobody really love me, so I'm going to just settle. I'm going to just settle. I, I tolerate him. I, I settle for him. What's wrong with that picture? When did the most I say just settle? Now, somebody who loves, they may be tolerant, but love is not always tolerant. Somebody catch that later on. I, that went over a few people here. Think about when you grew up. I know for, for when I was growing up, the ones that loved us, they loved us, but they wouldn't tolerate us acting no any kind of way. They sure wouldn't tolerate us talking back to grown folk like we see a lot of these children doing now because there is no respect nowadays. I wouldn't dare do what I see some of these children doing now to any of my elders growing up, not just parents. But now I see more parents that are scared of their children. Nowadays I see more children telling the parents what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. Some things you just don't tolerate. See, the most high even have a cutoff point. We keep walking around here with this grace and mercy as a license to sin. And one day you're going to see, well, they ain't tolerating it no more. The Holy Spirit ain't going to tolerate it. Grace and mercy will run out. So when I look at our Father's covenant, it's very powerful. See, I'm tired now this end together like this because when you are under covenant, you got discipline. There is order. There is respect. There is love. There's teaching going on in the house. There is praying with your wife and your husband. That's an awesome thing. When you do things in a divine order that the Most High showed us. But now, things are so out of order that our Father does not dwell in mess. I know people who are together, once again, still married, but living in different houses. But they took those wedding vows for, once again, better or for worse. But when the worst came, they left. You don't leave a covenant. You work it out. You don't get on Facebook and start Facebooking your problems. You don't Facebook your covenant. You work it out. You deal with it. You don't gossip with folks and, and, and try to get all these people that's trying that you think going to help you that can't do nothing for you no way because they got more problems than you. You don't deal with that. You work it out. You put it in the only hands you can put it in. The Father's hands. But see, once again, you don't have too many true covenants nowadays. You got contracts. Agreement. What is a contract? When you look at it, a, con a contract is just simply an agreement between two or more people. Or some, if you look it up, it's going to say two or more parties. Especially one that is written and enforceable by law. Well, you know what? I've never read in the scripture about a contract for a marriage. But I did see a covenant. Right there. Adam and Eve, covenant. Not contract. But a covenant, a covenant means that you come together. I love that. Coming together under who once again? The most high. That's a bond. You can't break that. I know I'm going to make somebody mad with this video because... They're going to realize that they got a contract and not a covenant. Their whole marriage has been based off a contract and not a covenant. When you look at the difference between a contract and a covenant, you should see some different things. Well, let's look at a few. What do you see when you see contract and covenant? One is about taking and one is, one is about giving. I take it. In a contract, I take it. Me being a producer 
and looking at different contracts. And when people want you, that's the first thing they want you to do. Get your stuff laid. Hey, man, we need to talk contracts. I need you to sign this contract. So in the contract, what do you see? You see, I got to do this. My contract says, I got to do this. If I'm going to get paid, I got to do this. Even if it's things that I don't like, I still got to do that. I got to go on and accept that. But in the covenant, you're giving more. You give yourself and you don't mind serving. See, somebody, somebody ain't understanding what I'm saying. When you take those vows, you're giving yourself to the other. You should have already been done, got yourself right with the most high. You should love yourself. See, this is why I've never been in a hurry to rush out and get married to somebody because for a while I've been straightening up, had to straighten up myself. Let me say that right. The most high dealing with me. Because if I'm not happy with self, there is no need to even talk about getting married. Spiritually, getting spiritually right. So when you get spiritually right, you don't mind serving. You don't look at a contract with yourself, with a marriage. You start looking at, I'm giving you me. I'm going to serve. I praise you. I didn't say worship you. I will even praise you. The Bible teaches you you praise your wife. You praise your husband. Praise and worship is two different things. You don't worship nobody but the Father. You don't never worship your husband nor your wife, but you do praise each other. You praise your children. When you think about serving, you're going to have your ups and downs, but you're still going to serve each other. You ain't going to argue, you'll disagree. You're not going to split up, you're going to work it out. That's what I'm talking about. See, when you love, you give. When you just continue to tolerate, you complain, you get mad. You fall into a state of depression because of what the other is doing to you. You feel like you're being forced. You're just doing the whatever. Well, this video might save somebody's relationship. See, a contract, you want to know what you're going to always get right. How much am I getting? How long is my contract? But once again, a covenant is lifelong. And you give. In that covenant, you be like, what, what can I do for you? Back to what I was just saying, serving. Not only am I, gonna, am I not going to give you my love, but I'm going to give you my all. I'm going to give you my time. I'm going to do whatever I got to do to make it right. That's when you're doing things with the right heart. But in this daytime, it's all about what can you do for me. See, the Bible calls it your help me. Now it's help me. Take care of me. What can you do for me? It's a lot of women with that mentality. It's a lot of men with that mentality. Let's just keep it real. They don't understand that it's not a I, it's a us. We're going to get through this. We're going to help each other. I see many men now getting broken down in the process of trying to be the breadwinner all the time and they just killing themselves slowly. Always tired. Always in bad health. Cause they, and ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that if you can do it. Or is it something wrong with that? Each to their own. We all got our different opinions on that. But I see too many men, they get broke down. And then a woman that they've been taking care of, don't, hey, what you gonna do? You better hear them get back on your feet. See, we got a lot to learn. Don't none of us know it all. Don't none of us have it all figured out. And a lot of times we are beating ourselves down because we just simply not living right. So you got a lot of people that's been married for a long time but still wasn't no Christ in it. Somebody catch that later on. They just tolerate each other. You know what? Truth hurts. When you look at a contract, 
it's all about you have to do something. In, in other words, you are kind of ordered to do something in so many ways. But in the covenant, you want to do it. I want to cook my wife breakfast without complaining. I want to run a bath water without complaining. I want to make sure she all right. I want to. I want to hear her talk to me when she get off work. But then you see the other man. Man, I hope she don't say nothing to me when she walk in the door. Man, I'm tired of her. But even when you are tired and had a long day, when you in that covenant, you don't mind going that extra mile. And let me throw this in here because the way things are and what we see in this jacked up life, ain't no way in hell you're going to have a covenant with two men. It ain't no way in hell you're going to have a covenant with two women. Let me rephrase it. I ain't going to even say ain't no way in hell. Ain't no way under the most highest covenant you're going to have two men with a covenant two women with a covenant. Now in the world, the world accepts that. But the Most High rejects that. That's part of the world system. But in God's system, there is no covenant like that. I laugh at some people now when I see them because I remember when they said, oh, to un unto death do us apart. They took them vows. But as soon as everything went downhill, that death do us apart went out the window. In other words, they were saying, until he or she fall apart, I'm out. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to try to wrap this video up. If there was many covenants like it's supposed to be, then the divorce rate wouldn't be sky high. It wouldn't be sky high. If there was the covenants like it's supposed to be, why would you even talk about prenuptial? Prenup. What is that? Another written contract between the two. Who planning to get married? That document will tell you all the inventory. Who going to get what? Who owns what? Or if it's property or access, whatever it is, who going to get what? In the case that we split up. What's wrong with that picture? What's wrong with that picture? See, this is real, but a lot of people laughing at this video. When I look at my mom and my dad, how long they've been together? They've been married almost 45, I think 45 years now, if I'm not mistaken. When I've been looking at them all my life and they ups and downs, I think my mom got married to my daddy when she was 17, but she was with him since she was 14, if I'm not mistaken. Mom, if you're looking at this and daddy, correct me. I know y'all looking. But I look at how long y'all been together, the ups and downs from when we was little to grown people now. As my mom is 60 and up. Dad is 60 and up. But they still together. And I always remember what my mama tell me when she got under that covenant. She said she wasn't planning on getting divorced, nor quitting, nor ever marrying again. So she said, I took my vows seriously. And I look at them right now, still together. Didn't care nothing about no big old fancy wedding. They didn't have all that. They didn't waste all that money. They had the cheap route and been together longer than most of the ones that they know. Because they under the covenant. But I can also say my mama tolerated a lot of stuff from my daddy. I can also say daddy tolerates some stuff from mama. But at the end of the day, no matter what has happened, you know what I heard? I ain't gonna never leave him. I don't care how hard my daddy sound, how loud he talk, 
All the noise that he'll talk. You know what he'll say? I don't know what I would have done without your mama. He can be on his maddest day. And at the end of the conversation, but I love her to death. I don't know what I would do without her. Because it's only the most high that can take two imperfect people, put them together, and keep them together. That's the only way it's going to work. So as I close, as my title says, you don't have a covenant. You got a contract. So go look each other in the eye and say, baby, I know we've been together. But do we really have a covenant? Are we following the most high? Are we praying? Are we studying? Are we living? Or are we just tolerating? Are we looking at this as a contract? Or do we have true love? That's my time, y'all. Have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day. Peace.